call this public caucus to order. The purpose of this meeting is to discuss the uh, proposed parking lot located at Penn Avenue and Linden Street in downtown Scranton and the removal of parking meters at this site. In attendance this evening is attorney Gregory Pascal, owner of this property. Following our guests' comments, council members may provide questions or comments in the established order. I welcome you, Attorney Pascal, to City Council Chambers. Please provide us with an overview of your plans, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my last name is spelled P-A-S-C-A-L-E. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're clear on that. And uh, our company is NGP Enterprises LLC, which is basically a company owned by the members of my law firm. It's the real estate holding company for the building, uh -huh. where our offices are, and where my care physical therapy is. Uh, we also have the law offices of Blasey and Walsh. Uh -huh. We have the Keys Bar uh, Beer and Spirits Restaurant. We have Portofilio Salon, a hairdresser, and we have um, uh, PCP Pro uh, computers. So um, my partners and I have owned the building for about 11 or 12 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, about five years ago, actually, the, the day our restaurant first opened, uh, the former Pocatello property was beginning to be torn down. And it was torn down and for the past five years. Unfortunately, we've had to deal with uh, uninhabitable sidewalks and a hole in the ground and a fence, which blocks pedestrian uh, traffic. And if I may approach now, I'd like to show you. This is the before picture. Yes. OK, and uh, okay. This, this property here, that's a party wall with our building. So, as a result of this, we had water getting in our building, we had pigeons getting in our building, and uh, it was a problem for us. So, because um, of that situation, when we had the chance to purchase this property, we purchased the property and uh, began renovations, and I, if you bear with me here, I'll show you the, uh, I don't know if you've had an opportunity to, uh, to see the after. We bricked the side of our building with water. We had to actually build a uh, concrete wall to support our foundation so we could fill the hole in the ground and then we bricked the side of our building. Okay. Yeah. which has been a huge improvement to the whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the size of that, that lot, it's only uh, 40 by 75. It is really not conducive for a new building with a new building code because of all the requirements for the size of hallways and handicapped access. You really can do anything commercially feasible. So our plan is for a parking uh, lots for our employees. Yeah. 
and um, we had to show up at the time to see if we were going to use the with all the manholes and everything we've shown. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, that's all, that's all we have is this little piece here. We're only going to have 10, 12 parking spots. It's going to be pretty tight. Um, it's been big already. We haven't paid the hospital yet. Yeah, it's been that issue you know, we're doing all those handicap access. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're working right here on this corner this week. They're going to be done by the end of the week. And next week, they're going to do this corner. They're going to tear out some of the asphalt we put in for the, for the handicap access to get, get in and out of here. And then we'll put the final code on as soon as that's done. I see. So, if you have any questions, I welcome any questions. That's our story. At the end of this whole project, you know, we would have spent about $100,000. <coughs> Uh, besides our building and, and this property here, I also own the property 329 Fed Avenue, which I bought some other uh, partners, and we um, we put over a million dollars of improvements in that property about seven or eight years ago, including a parking lot there. So I have a big investment on Fed Avenue. I'm a tax credit the city, and uh, you know that's what we're asking. But I think it's a big improvement for the city. Yes. So I'm still going to lose the which I don't want to see either, but I don't see it for us. Okay. If, you, yeah, if you'd like to be seated. Okay. Well, uh, clearly, from your presentation, it's PennDOT that seeks the removal of three parking uh, meters, uh, two of which are double-headed. Is that correct? Well, yeah, they, they want as part of our per to give us a permit. That's, that's what they've asked for. Okay. Um, and you have said uh, perhaps you could state that again into the microphone, that if the property were not to be used um, as a parking lot, it really could not serve any other purpose. The property itself is only 30 feet wide with the right to use a 10-foot vault. So it really is not wide enough for a commercial, you know, to build a new commercial building with today's building standards. It wouldn't be economically feasible. I, I think that's part of the reason why the former owner wasn't able to proceed with the building there as well. Okay. And if the parking meters then must be removed by law, I know that uh, some of my colleagues were interested in learning if you're willing to compensate the city of Scranton for that loss of revenue. We put all the revenue we had and borrowed additional monies to be able to do this project. So we, we simply don't have any money at this point to contribute. Well, um, perhaps here's something you might consider in the future then, uh, participation in the MBRO advertising program that the city is looking <coughs> to initiate, which is basically um, a marketing advertising uh, program whereby your firm, any of the businesses that you own, would advertise on various uh, city properties. Certainly would be willing to consider that. I'd like to learn more about that pro program. Great. Uh, Councilman McGough, do you have any questions or comments? A, a couple. Uh, will the access and egress uh, be gated or chained in any way? Not you sure, I'm not sure about that. I have ordered some signs today for private parking only, and uh, since it's going to be our employees parking there every day, I don't anticipate a problem during the day. If I do have a problem, then we, we would consider gating it and chaining it, but right now it's not, it's not in the game plan. Uh, would, would it be accessible um, after your working hours after you know your businesses are closed would then those spaces be accessible to anyone else to park there um i'm assuming that the um patrons of the restaurant will use that at night but 
That would be after, you know, after hours. Right. Now, yeah, I, I, that's what I was referring yeah, to. During right. normal, normal business hours, it's not going to be accessible because our employees will be parked there and we plan on policing it. Mm -hmm. After business hours, our, my plan was to allow the, the restaurant, my tenant, to, to use those spots at night. Very good. Um, and, and they'd be responsible for policing it, obviously. Can I assume, uh, I'm assuming that um, with the improvements that you have made to the um, property itself and to your existing properties, um, that that has also increased your tax liability on those properties? Well, I, I Over think not, but it, it's possible. I mean, it, it was well, I, I would just assessed pretty high when we acquired it. Okay. So it's just assessed as land right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was all. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Rogan? I mean, yes, thank you for coming in, and I apologize for being a few minutes late. Uh, most of my questions were, were um, already asked by my colleagues. Um, just one to piggyback on what Mr. McGough said. Um, are all taxes current between state, local? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. All our taxes are current. And I was, I was down there today, and I know it says in the legislation three meters. Now, I didn't get out of the car. I just went around the block a couple times. I only saw two. But there's there's two, the, no, a there's two poles with double-headed meters okay. on Linden Street, and there's one pole with a single single meter on Linden. Okay, because the the single one I must have missed, because um, I just kept going around the block a couple times checking it out. It's a single on Penn that that the pole isn't there now because of the construction. Okay. Well, it's, that area certainly was an eyesore for quite a long time. Um, Again, I'm going to listen to what the public has to say after the caucus as well, and I do appreciate you coming in and answering our questions. Cool. That's all. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have any questions or comments? Just one. Everything that I was going to ask was also uh, mentioned by my colleagues. What year did you purchase the property? The, the, the property, right? The Pub Charles or the original? The Pub Charles. We, we just purchased that in November last year. Okay, um, were all back taxes paid on the property? Yeah, when we, when we purchased it, we paid all, a part of the closing is, we to make sure we got clear title, we paid all of the back taxes on that property up to date, yes. Okay, Yeah. that was all I had. Absolutely. Is there anything else? Uh, I was just gonna, I, we spoke of it before, uh, and somewhat in jest, but somewhat seriously, uh, uh, you know, would you consider moving up a block and also uh, uh, taking care of that property, uh, that corner as well? I was hoping you wouldn't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done such a great job on that part of the, no, that it uh, certainly would be appreciated. Here, just so you know, we, we pulled up all the sidewalks that were there. The, in addition to, to filling the hole and, and right. the side of our building, we replaced all the sidewalks on that whole corner of that property, as well as we replaced all the sidewalks in front of our building, which were in disrepair. We filled all the vaults, and uh, you know it was about a four-month project. So we think it's it's really been a, a big asset to the whole neighborhood, and um, you know we're really thrilled with the way it came out. Uh, you know we're still. We're still believers in the city of Scranton, and we're going to stay here. Our business is going to be here for the next 30 years, and, and we're making the investment to prove it. Thank you. And I thank you very much for your participation tonight in this caucus. And uh, we, as a council, thank you for the improvements that you have made to that area of the downtown. It's, it's certainly um, very impressive. And uh, if no one has any further comments, I will adjourn. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your inviting me. And thank you so much for coming. And if thank anybody has coming. any further questions, feel free to contact me anytime. Thank you. This public caucus is adjourned.
of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Cody Jude Barace, beloved son of Dr. Linda Barace and Judge Michael Barace, grandson and brother, Mary Helene Walsh, devoted wife, mother of my former classmate Kathleen, grandmother, sister, and aunt, and their dear families and many friends who suffer their loss. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third Order 3A, Minutes of the Redevelopment Authority's regular meeting held January 2nd, February 6th, and March 6th of 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Single Tax Office City Funds Distributed, Comparison for 2013 through 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Minutes of the Scranton Housing Authority's regular meeting held March 4th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Yes, I'm just a, a repeat of from last week. I'm the South Scranton Home Fair, which is open to all residents of Scranton, will be held on Monday, April 29th from 12 to 6. And um, if they have any questions, they can contact our office as well. I'm OECD will be having a booth regarding first time home buyer programs and different services that they offer. And also, I'm in observance of Earth Day, the Lackawanna County Recycling Center will hold a one-day event for electronic recycling. Um, it's free of charge from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on April 20th, and that's 3400 Boulevard, Boulevard Ave. And they could call 963-6868 for details. Thank you. Councilman Loscombe is unable to attend tonight's meeting. Beatles, Burgers and Brews, a fundraiser benefiting United Neighborhood Centers of Northeastern Pennsylvania, will be held on Tuesday, April 23rd from 5 to 8 p.m. at Morgan's, 315 Greenridge Street in Scranton. Tickets are $20 and include music by the Fab Three, burgers, veggie burgers, and hot dogs, as well as draft beer from 6 to 8 p.m. For more information, or to purchase tickets, call 570-346-0759 or go to www.uncnepa.org. The Fraternal Order of Eagles, number 314 in Scranton, will conduct its annual Spring Craft Fair on April 20th, 2013, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Expect to find all manner of handmade goods, including items from Pampered Chef, Avon, and Mia Bella candles, among others. Food will be available for purchase. For further information, call the club at 961-5495. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker this evening is Giovanni Piccolino. Uh, Mr. Piccolino obviously isn't in attendance, and so we'll go to our next speaker, Bill Jackowitz.
Good evening, Scranton C City Council. Bill Jackowitz, South Scranton resident. Good evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, compliment uh, Scranton City Council for bringing in the state representatives and the state senator last week. Although I believe it's a little bit too late, I've been advocating this for about 10 years every year to have a meeting and to have a caucus with these people. You know, and basically the only thing I learned last week that everything is the Republicans' fault. Republicans got blamed for everything. The last Republican that I can remember being elected in the city of Scranton was Brian Reap. And I believe that was about 12 years ago. So I don't know how we can blame the Republicans for everything. Everyone elected in this city, including the school board, the county commissioners, you're all Democrats. The mayor's a Democrat. The city controller's a Democrat. All five council members are Democrats. The city's been distressed for going on 22 years, and the Democrats have been in control of the city. Prior to Governor Corbett being elected, we had a Democratic governor, Governor Rendell. The head of the Senate, the Democratic Party, was inmate Mel. He was the head of the Senate. All our representatives have been Democrats. Bellardi, Gaynor Colley, and so on and so forth. Our city council was Democrats. We had Murphy City Council, we had the Bilio City Council, we had Gatelli City Council, we had McGough City Council, and now we have Evans City Council. All Democrats. But yet, last week, the Republicans were blamed for everything. I don't understand it. It's a little bit too, too late. This should have been done 15 years ago. 10 years ago when you had the Democratic people there. And we would no longer be distressed, possibly, but we were ignored. The Catelli Council ignored us, the McGough Council ignored us, the Murphy Council ignored us, and so did the DeBilio Council. And where are we at? We're going on 22 years of being distressed, but yet we're going to blame the Republicans for it. Unbelievable. The sequestration. I know a lot about it. You know why? I deal with it every day. Every single day I deal with the secret space. Okay? That was a proposed by President Obama. It was approved by a Democratic Senate and, and approved by a Republican Congress. That's it's what it's all about. It's not, you know, you, whose fault is it? It's the Democrats' fault, the Republicans' fault, and the Independents' fault. Okay? This blame game's got to stop. Everybody's blaming everybody. Nobody accepts responsibility. The bottom line is the city's going on 22 years of being distressed. We have a, a $17 million bill that's going to be due to pay the police and firefighters. Do we have the money available to pay that? I'm asking, yes or no? Not at the present time. We'd have to borrow it. When's it due? It's due at the end of June. For my what happens if the, the borrowing isn't approved? Have, you, have we got anybody to approve it yet saying they're going to give us the money? We've had meetings with uh, I'm not asking workers. a meeting. I'm saying, do you have anything that says the people are going to give us the money? 30 June is not too far away. There's nothing set in stone. Okay. There's so no what happens stone. then? That's my question. What's the backup plan? If we don't get the, the, the money, what's the backup plan? We would accrue interest on what we owe until we did. Okay, what are we going to do about the 5.5 5 million for the, re, for the uh, retirees and the health care plan? What are we going to do about that? That's due too, I believe, on 30 June. What are we going to do about that? That's not due on the 30th of June. Um, let me get my cash flow sheet. The majority of the pension payments are due in October. Okay, what are we going to do about that? Do we have approval on that? Is the money coming? Is the mayor and the administration working on this? Is the business administrator working on this? They are working on it and they are discussing it with potential lenders. What's the lenders. results? Right now, what is the answer? What are the results? We, we don't, don't have, have a lender set in stone as of right now. So, not, so in other words, we don't have it? As of Simply right now, no. Okay. 
I think the taxpayers need to know that. I think they need to be, know that, and they need to be revised at least every month on whether or not we have the money or not. Because the taxpayers are the one who's going to have to pay the bill. And I understand you guys are taxpayers too. So you should be just as worried about it and concerned about it as I am and other citizens are. The fire on the 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue. That's what happens when you have vacant buildings. We have $30 million worth of vacant buildings sitting on the 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue. And I understand that that building that was on fire was not part of the Renaissance problem. I understand that. Thank but you, we Mr. still Jack have Lutz. vacant buildings sitting there that were approved by Scranton City Council and the mayor. When are we going to get those buildings filled so we don't have any more fires on vacant buildings sitting on the 500 block block one Avenue? Thank you. You're welcome. Sal Zumo. Les Spindler. Good evening, Council Les Miller, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, my thoughts and prayers go out to the Beres family. I know Mike very well. I don't know his wife that well. I knew Cody when he was a little boy. He and my daughter played soccer together. I helped coach them up at East Grant, and they played youth soccer together. He was a wonderful kid, and he's going to be missed. May he rest in peace. Uh, moving on. I was walking through town the other day and I noticed the traffic lights and the walk don't walk signs at the corner of Washington and Linden, just down the end of the block here. Uh, they are not synchronized. I was trying to cross Washington Avenue, had the red light, and it still it said don't walk. I should have been able to walk. And I have that in writing. I'll give it to Ms. Marciano. And uh, I did notice one or two others. I, forgot often what they were so if I see them again I'll write them down thank you uh, couldn't believe when I read something in the paper the state is spending five hundred thousand dollars to renovate Nayog Park haven't we put enough money into Nayog Park I know it's well over a million dollars the mayor spent up there all as soon as he took office that money could be used in could be put to much better use. For one example, our streets. Our streets are in deplorable condition. It might be the worst I've ever seen. And they're going to put $500,000 into Nayak Park. I just, th this is just totally outrageous. I don't know if this is a grant and it could only be used for that or. Well, actually, um, I believe it was the Scranton Recreation Authority who applied for it. So uh, it, never came before Scranton City Council. And uh, my understanding would be that, uh, yes, it likely can be used only for that purpose. And in addition, no matching funds are required from the city. Well, I just think that's a waste of money. There are many more important items that could be fixed in the city. And the streets, I think, are the number one priority. They're just a mess. Uh, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Andy Spragler, Citizens Grant and Fells Grantonians. Uh, I'm reading here, let's start with your B here. Uh, I guess it's uh, 5B. You're telling me we're not going to pay a land f up uh, Keystone land landfill this year, and next year we're going to be making double payments? That is accurate, yes. That's accurate. Two of those people will not probably be sitting on council when this happens. I wish maybe the other three that is going to be sitting there looks at it very closely. You can't just keep passing debt off. It just don't work. And it never will work. Now I might as well talk about the Southside Complex. I brought it up last week. And it always comes back to bite you. It's like a mad dog. They'll always come around and bite you again if you let them bite you once. To people of Scranton, 
let them really see some of the background. Mr. I wish Mr. Phillips was here because he used to use that field a lot better, more than me with his baseball team. But our dear mayor, for some reason or other, got in cahoots with the University of Scranton. Remember they said him, tapped him on the back and said, hey, how about giving us the Southside complex there? I mean, forget about the city of Scranton. Why don't we care about them people? We are the city of Scranton. The University of Scranton, we are the city. So a deal was worked out. And the mayor hired, like you said last week, a firm to go and lobby all the legislature. That money that was put, that was put with flood money way back when, and actually it probably will be a floodplain again if that dike ever broke. But anyway, he went. He took the money that they gave him, I think it was like a million, million, two hundred thousand, something like that. I don't have the exact figures in my head. But he said, I'm going to build you a field. Same deal, lights and all of this. Did you ever see that field? It's in the field of dreams in his head. This is where we got our field. Now the gall of this, the university went to the county and said, hey, we're good friends with you. How about you giving us $8 million so we can fix up the complex that the mayor said was bad? This is how it works. It just galls me that we're going to spend money that they're well able to spend. And then all the people that were cut off all these relief programs. Does that make sense? This is one reason why when you see it on the ballot, to get rid of them county commissioners, you voted for them. They get rid of them and have a study commission. They got to go. There's no question about it. <clears throat> this deal is being destroyed. Any way you look at it, we're being destroyed as a, as a people of Scranton. Money that could be used for other things are being poured into the university. What do we get from them? Slap on the back, say you good suckers, you do it. We'll hire maybe your daughter to clean one of our latrines in this university. Anybody that makes a good buck at it is out of Scranton. Just remember that. When you go there and ask how many of the professors actually live in Scranton, or how many of the top echelon live in Scranton. There's some there, I know. But there isn't a lot. A lot of them got out of the area. And it's the way it goes. I'll bring up the thing. I ain't saying anything about the meters down there at Pub Charles. Right? You, what I said to you, I already said to you on the matter, and it's really no sense bringing it up again. But the university, you got to make them pay. I don't care what you have to do. If you have to lobby down in Harrisburg, when they're redoing this, nonprofits go down and lobby it. Go down there. Let let our dear people that were here introduce you to all the other legislators and senators, and explain the problem. That's the only way you're going to get any action. To sit up here and talk like we're doing now does nothing. Even if you got it came before you, a vote. Saying no does nothing. You got to be progressive and not no votes. No votes don't matter. I sit up there and watch Billy and you, Janet, vote no to a lot of things. Did it matter? No. Maybe it made you in your head, I said it, but, but it didn't matter to the people of Scranton. They are suffering. Maybe instead of that no vote, you should run out there and press more hands to get rid of some of the people that were there that were doing all these things. One was the mayor. You should have tried to get rid of him long ago. But unfortunately, everybody kept voting for him in. And I've attended to a lot of people where they come up and tell me, look what he did for NAOG. Look what he did for this park. Look what he did for that park. I said, in the end, you're going to pay for it. Because everything he did at NAOG has to be maintained. There's no question about it. You build a wooden building, you're going to have to take care of that wooden building for the rest of your life, if you live here that long. <sighs> There's no sense getting any more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Good evening.
Westside Good residents. <clears throat> Um, I come here today to, as a parent of a young child, I see there's nothing to do in this city for the children. Um, everything that you can do, there's a bar right down the street, or there's movie theaters, but you have to pay for them. and the, children are walking the streets. Um, as the pools are not open, and I know it's the mayor's fault because Pat was telling me a couple weeks ago, um, I was suggesting to him that we should do fundraisers to get the pools open in every uh, community in the city. Um, the money could go to taking care of the pools, or even having um, the children that cannot pay to get into the pools, have them um, uh, for, for, the, for fees. <clears throat> um, you can also have fees for the pools themselves. You could have low fees for the children and higher fees for the adults, like Weston Park, I've seen there's fees for that. Um, and there's, as a parent of a special needs child, we do not have, as far as I know, we don't have any parks for special needs kids. Um, we go up to McDade, because there's a, a park up there for the children with special needs, and it's just easier for him to get around. And we need activity, more activities for the kids, for they don't get in trouble. Um, as I was told, there is no curfew for the kids in this city. Um, I believe that there should be even an 11 o'clock curfew for the kids that are under 18. Because I live by the high school and there are kids walking the streets at sometimes two, three o'clock in the morning. And where are the parents? Um, there's also, I don't know if you've seen the news, but St. Joseph's is, had budget cuts and the telephone isn't cutting it. So if anyone wants to donate, the checks can be made out to St. Joseph Center. My child is a recipient of that money. He goes to physical therapy and he goes to speech therapy. Um, there's also a recycling event up at the Abington Library this weekend if you want to get all your stuff gone before the 20th as well um and april 23rd and 24th at pizza by papa's there's the benefit for the autism um they're going to donate half of the sales of the pizza to the northeast regional autism center at the friendship house so if anyone wants good pizza Go over there on the 23rd and the 24th. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and also, um, Frank was, we were talking about that house across the street from my house. Yes. Um, it's owned by Wells Fargo, and it's, the address is 421 423 South Hyde Park. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Taxes paid. Haven't got my trash bill yet. They didn't pick it up last week. My recycle, by the way. Um, I believe the. Um, Maybe they don't the like my. The uh, garbage uh, is. From what I've heard, anyway, it should be sent out tomorrow, the mm -hmm. 12th, 
so okay. I would expect next week, hopefully, residents will be receiving them. Hopefully, uh, they'll, they'll take my recycling out. I don't, maybe they don't like my uh, campaign signs out front. Who knows? <laughs> uh, on 7A and 7B tonight, uh, if you can't get any compensation out of these people for eliminated parking meters, uh, please put it on hold if you can. Okay, uh, now some different things have come to my attention this week. Uh, a lot of talk about school boards and so forth. And I had an idea for our senators and state assemblymen uh, based it on tax returns. The amount they can spend is based on how much the average person in the community goes backwards on wages. So they're not constantly looking for increases in uh, uh, property tax to offset the wage taxes that they're not going to get because they sent all their jobs over somewhere to, to some other country, third world toilet. Uh, now, this county sales tax, uh, how is that supposed to be split up here? Because we're going after a sales tax uh, with the uh, presumption that it's going to compensate us for our lack of uh, property tax revenue. But if the county is getting two-thirds of it and we're one-third of the population of the county, then where's the advantage to it? I, I don't see one. Uh, because we're paying our own taxes and they're getting two-thirds of the tax anyway or 60 percent of it and that's what I understand it to be so in other words once again it's a Trojan horse thank you county commissioners and uh, please keep that in mind when it comes to uh, fruition because basically if that be the case we don't need it and uh, once again, uh, you were just reminded on the park authorities, but here we have kids that would know where to go and nothing to do all summer, and, and uh, uh, we're polishing the sliding boards and charging all the more for them. Um, and, of course, the, that caught my eye this morning, the grants from the, for the Southside Complex, and basically that money was tinkled away uh, to provide uh, tax relief for, uh, for real estate companies. That's, that's uh, where that money went. We compensated the one year because we increased the uh, real estate tax, the transfer tax. I remember the meeting. And I remember when it was proposed. So they knocked a, a percent or so off of uh, the transfer tax. And... Uh, they uh, subsidized it with the money from the golf course and the south side complex and everybody else and that's just wonderful but uh if you ever settled on a house well pat you just did recently 15 percent goes into uh this silly piece you know you used to have to have 20 percent down now you have to have 20 percent down and it just goes to silly fees at least then you own 20% of the house. You know, and it, it's, it's crazy. It, it's just uh, like thousands of dollars here and thousands of dollars there to close on a house. It's, it's totally disgusting in a state. It really needs reform. I, um, I met with the Greater Scranton Board of Realtors a few weeks ago, and they had a lot of good ideas on different proposals and that they're doing mm -hmm. across the state and other areas to, one, rehab, properties throughout the city that are in disrepair and get families living in there which is what we need to get our get our tax base yeah. up in the city and have more people you know living here and you're right um you know the you don't mind crossed are an atrocity and points and it, it just goes on and on and on i i just went you know? went through it a few months ago and the, mm -hmm. the down payment is isn't the problem it's it's all the ads yeah. and then the reality transfer is a killer between that's, the that's city when and the I state. First, when I was buying my house in 02, that's when I first realized that my blood pressure was beyond, and unfortunately, I didn't take advantage of that warning. Uh, now, okay, uh, 
Social Security CPI. And uh, that also applies to veterans and so forth. Uh, once again, we did uh, with the sequester, but Obama gets a golden parrot for that because it's uh, uh, the average person on Social Security in this town was on about minimum wage. And uh, by the way, it's also veterans, and it's 600 days in some cities for a veteran to get treatment from the VA, to get under the care of the VA. Now, what do you do with the person with PTSD and a couple of firearms laying around his house, and, you know, the guy can't even get into the VA to get some medication or something. It's really, or even just therapy, you know, for wounds and stuff like that. In some places, it's 600 days. And I don't know who thinks that this is acceptable in Congress, but it's certainly not. And uh, another golden parrot goes, I'll make it quick, dual tracking in the home mortgage. Homes taken without justification. Now, they're supposed to get $125,000 uh, compensation. The typical compensation for a non-veteran is $500, and they pay $250 an hour with an average of uh, uh, $10,000 paid to consultants to decide who to give the $500 to. That's mighty wide of them. Have a great day, and thank, thank you. you. And don't forget to bok, bok, bok. <laughs> is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. My name is Greg Evans. Good evening. Uh, Scranton resident, Scranton small business owner. I wanted to comment on item 6A and about ECTV. And I just wanted to thank you for um, working to maintain the transparency that ECTV provides. Um, I know many people sitting home right now just watching a luxury of their homes that either, you know, it's inconvenient for them to come here at 6 o'clock or they're just getting out of work. So I think it's a great asset to have. And thank you for maintaining that with, with approving this grant. Um, then so, item 7B, um, regarding the, the parking lot on the corner of Penn Avenue and Linden Street. Uh, out of curiosity, do you know how many meters are being removed? Three. Uh, yeah. Just three? Okay. But two are double-headed double, double -headed meters. Okay, so it would be... So actually, it's a total of five. Five spots, okay. And I know that this may sound, you know, contradicting even though, you know, we're looking to generate revenue and everything. But I think it's a good move, actually, to approve this because this parking lot is for a current downtown business owner who already houses other small businesses in downtown Scranton. And basically, by him providing parking, he's not really so much in competition with, with, the parking, uh, with, the, um, with our parking garages. Um, as the parking study said, we should discourage um, private parking, but I don't think this is, is, a, is a deterrent at all. Um, moreover, I think it actually encourages further investment in Scranton, inviting people to his building as tenants and having that, that parking readily available. So um, I, I appreciate you passing this as well. And one, one last question, because it's a, it's a large um, hot topic right now, are the food trucks in downtown Scranton. And I was wondering if anything has been drafted to amend le legislation yet that has been passed along your way. There's been a lot of talk about it, but I don't know if it has or if there has been discussion yet. No. No? Okay. All right. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Uh, first, a uh, couple of questions from the past. Uh, I guess, Frank, the parking uh, tax, how many of the, the persons who were billed have responded? Uh, most have responded. I spoke with the business administrator. There are a few um, private lot owners who have not paid as, as of yet and they will be billed as delinquent. Also, the University of Scranton is suing 
um, for the um, uh, on the basis okay. that they're a nonprofit and okay. that they shouldn't I, you, have you to pay. You could do that during five, if, if I, your, your fifth order, if you would. I just okay, I, I will mention it the, then. Give the statistics and the rental registrations, Mr. McGough. Will you be providing them during fifth order? Okay. Um, I, I hope we get back on track with that. I would also like to know that fire in the 600 block of Hemlock. Uh, I noticed the paper said it dislocated 12 people. And uh, I just wonder uh, if those apartments are, uh, are registered and how many apartments there are in that building. That would be nice to know. And have we had any uh, MBRO signups as yet? Um, I just had spoken with the BA about this, in just, fact, this I mean, week. And uh, yes or no? he's currently working with a company to take over the management of the program. Oh, OK. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, following up on, on Bill Jackowitz's uh, questions on the, the loan, um, uh, can you shed any light on the interest rates that are being discussed with potential lenders? Um, there hasn't been any discussion yet on the interest rates. OK. And then to the, back to the agenda, hopefully I'll get beyond this. But 3B, uh, when you, uh, unless the, the figures that I copied uh, in the clerk's office uh, were already adjusted for the 22%, it would appear that we're about $375,000 behind last year in collections. Um, you know, if you disagree or, or agree, uh, that would be, you know, fifth order would be fine because I've got a lot I'd like to cover. Uh, 5B, wasn't this already done either late last year or early this year on the, on the trash? I believe it was in the budget. Yes. It's it was in, in the budget, it's, yes. It's, it's included in the budget, <coughs> but this is the legislation that will provide for that. Okay. And then um, on 7A and B, is it, is it normal to seek approval um, after the fact instead of before the work uh, commences? And, and we'll file, uh, with, with regard to 7B, when you pass this tonight, will file of Council 100 of 2009 be modified uh, de facto, or should that uh, not be in, the, in this piece of legislation, amend it to instruct the, make that instruction, because that's the official where parking meters are supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. So I would think that should be amended to instruct the modification of that. Uh, 6A, uh, Mr. Joyce, maybe during, uh, again, fifth order, you could tell us how much will remain in the RERE account after the $20,000 withdrawal. Um, that would be of interest. And that's actually a good segue back into what I started last week on the OECD uh, loan portfolio. Uh, only two of the UDAG loans are current. The other three are in default with two of the three in Chapter 7 bankruptcy and the other in litigation. It appears this pot of funding will be drying up before too long. Uh, other statistics on the loan portfolio. Uh, of the 24 commercial industrial loans, 50% are in default, ranging from one payment late to 56 payments late as of the end of last calendar year. The amount still owed on these troubled loans at the end of last calendar year is $1.2 million. The amount outstanding on the UDAG loans in default is slightly over $400,000. Of the 11 CDBG, CDBGR uh, loans, two did not have their first payment due until February uh, 1st of this year, so uh, there's a question on whether or not they're able to pay. Six are in default with 12, 31, 12 outstanding balances totaling $614,516 with the lack of payment ranging from five to 67 payments late. Uh, of the, may I complete this section? Thank yes. you. Of the five enterprise zone loans, three are in default with 1231 balances owed of $1.1 million and a range of 18 to 51 payments late. Of the three EDA loans, two are in default, ranging from 22 to 53 payments late 
and outstanding standing balances of slightly over $558,000. Um, perhaps I'll have more on that at a, at a future date, but uh, since the wage tax draws $1.65 for every dollar of real estate taxes, jobs are critical, and, um, and our loan, loan portfolio is in abysmal shape. Uh, even though you can't tell that from the HUD account, which is probably, or the HUD uh, C, uh, caper. So I'll probably be talking about that more later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bay Franis Scranton. I don't know what meeting Mr. Jackowitz was at last week, but the one I was at was nothing like what he said. You didn't sit there and blame the Republicans. You actually asked Mr. Haggerty, Tom Welby, and Senator Blake if they would help you in so many different ways. You brought issues to them, and they would not commit to one thing. You, Mrs. Evans, have stated that you met with Mr. Blake many times privately and got nowhere. Mr. Blake was saying that people in Allentown and people in Harrisburg, they're hurting too. But John Blake doesn't represent those people. He represents the people in Scranton, Archibald, and up the line. Why should he be worried about the people in Allentown and Harrisburg? Here's what I see. I see John Blake, Haggerty, and Marty Flynn not giving an inch to the people in their districts, not representing the people that they got elected to represent. They're taking care of whoever they're taking care of, but they're taking care of people. They're not taking care of the constituents. So none of this crap about the Republicans, that's not what you were saying. You were trying desperately over and over again, asking them, could you help? Could you please help? You presented it in many different ways, and they never committed to one thing. The whole, it was like a nightmare. I mean, anybody that saw this, the paper, the paper wrote a whole different story as though what happened wasn't what they wrote. What happened is what happened at council. If anybody saw the council meeting, it was a completely different story. I don't know how many times you had to ask them, each one of you, and not one of them would say, yes, they will. So what does that tell you? They're taking care of their friends, and they will continue to. John Blake is best friends with Senator Mello. What does that tell you? I can't even believe they elected him, but anyway, another issue. Oh. First, these people that come to council every week and they keep on saying that you don't do this and you don't do that and you don't do this and why don't you do this and why don't you get us out of distress? Don't they realize that you've tried everything you possibly can? I mean, what else could they? Here you had an example last week asking the state to help. The state put us in this position to start with. They kept us in distress. What more could you do? It's, it's the senators and representatives that aren't helping us. They could change that, but they're not, they're not willing to. So all these people that come here and say, why don't you do this? I'd like to know if they were up there, what they would do. Talk is cheap. I'm sick of hearing it. I'm sick of hearing that you're getting blamed for things that you're not doing when all you do is try every day. They should be in your shoes for half an hour. Another thing, talk about free enterprise. The food trucks. Eat the fork, is it? Eat the fork? What the fork? What the fork? Well, you still eat the food from what the fork. <laughs> But anyway, I, I've had the food from what the fork. I pull over with my car and get it and ran, meaning I could stop there, grab something, eat, and go home. It's delicious. I mean, instead of going to a restaurant, sometimes you don't feel like going to a restaurant. They're not taking businesses away from restaurants. I mean, they have, they're only there two days a week. They pay for the permits. They pay for the parking spaces that they're using for the day, the meters. Uh, it's all greed if you ask me, from these restaurants that don't like the competition. Competition is good. How about if there's a clothing store on one block and another clothing store moves in three doors away? They're going to try to make them move? What's the difference? There's no difference. These food trucks serve a purpose. For people on the go, people want something quick, people don't want to get dressed to, get, to go to a restaurant, they're very handy, they're great for people that work in Scranton and the offices. If the mayor tries to push this, that they can't be within 500 feet. That should be outlawed. And Mr. McGough, are you against this? And for what reason would you ever be against someone trying to have a good business, make a living? They're there two days a week. 
Can I address it when I speak? For me? Can I address that when I, during motions? I'll answer that. Well, the only thing is, when you say something, I can't reply to it. That's the only thing. <laughs> so well, where, where does that get me? I have to come next I, I was just trying to save your time. Sometimes mm -hmm. you object when we do answer. Oh, no, so no I, not at all, Mr. McGough. Uh, no, I'm not opposed to the food trucks whatsoever. Oh, you're not? Oh, we're very, I'm glad to hear that. So quite possibly, Mr. Rogan, are you against it or for it? No, I, I actually met with um, Mario um, last week and spoke yes. to him, and I think that there has to be a balance struck that works for everyone. Um, I think he has a great business, and the other food trucks do as well. Right. Mr. Joyce? No, I'm not opposed to the food trucks. Mrs. Evans? Being that they pay their fair share. I'm not opposed to them either, but I agree with uh, Councilman Rogan that we need a balanced approach because we don't want any of the businesses hurt. No, but if you put something like 500 feet from a restaurant, there wouldn't be any place for any of these food trucks to go. It can't be that kind of stiff thing. I don't know what you could do. Well, actually, there is no legislation before City Council. Nothing has been sent by the administration in this regard, and nothing has been drafted by City Council. But when it is, I hope you take into consideration that these people have to make a living, and they're serving a good deed to the public. I mean, they're very handy. Like I said, competition is good, isn't it? So everybody, go to What the Fork. The food truck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Uh, before I get into uh, the issues tonight, I just want to start off by uh, thanking the uh, Scranton Fire Department, our police department, and all those involved in the... Uh, attending to the uh, fire on the 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue last night. Uh, obviously, it, certainly the situation could have been a lot worse than it was. Um, and uh, I'm just glad to see that, uh, you know, nobody was, nobody was harmed and that, uh, you know, uh, we'll be able to move on and hopefully uh, that portion of the block can be restored and, and back to its normal shape uh, at a, uh, you know, adequate time. Uh, in regards to a lot of the discussion that took place tonight, uh, I'd like to go back and, and discuss a few of the comments Mr. Spragley made tonight because I thought he probably made uh, a, lot of, a lot of sense tonight, more sense than, than some of the other speakers I listened to, it. nothing personal with the other speakers, but he addressed, he touched on a lot of the issues that uh, you know, I've, I've talked about in the past, uh, particularly the nonprofits and the uh, harm they've caused the city. And I know this is a touchy subject and, and uh, Many people think that we're picking on nonprofits. Uh, this has nothing to do with picking on nonprofits. This has to do with the, rea the reality of the situation. And the reality of the situation is, is the nonprofits in this town have gotten a free ride for far too long. And the ones who've carried their load are the taxpayers of this city. And uh, I think that it needs to come to an end. And it needs to come to an end now. Uh, last week we had our state legislators and Senator uh, Blake here uh, discussing that issue. And I'm hopeful that uh, legislation uh, from, this, from the Commonwealth will come forward that will force the nonprofits to pay their fair share once and for all. Um, we, we talk about the university a lot because they're the best example we can use. Um, it's my belief they've, they've gotten the biggest free ride out of all of them for at least the last 12 years of this administration because um, it's been about who can we take care of and who can we protect. And that's the philosophy that this administration's uh, played for the last 12 years, and that's why we're in the situation we're in today. Because rather than doing the right thing, they chose to take the approach of who contributed to my campaign, uh, who do I owe a favor to, who can I get a job for. Uh, that's, that's the philosophy all through town, city government, uh, school district, county, it's everywhere. And now's the time for it to stop. Uh, I believe that uh, the residents of this city have suffered enough, and we've continued to go back to them time and time again and place the financial burden on them. And it's not fair because they've paid enough. Uh, it's, it's people like the university who have, you know, given us their, you know, to them it's their whopping $175,000 a year, and that's a complete joke. Um, they obtain services that the, that the residents of the city pay for each and every year. They get it for nothing, and it's not right. And so now is the time to take action, hold them accountable, and put them in their place once and for all because I, for one, am very frustrated. I've about had it. And uh, I think now is the time that something needs to happen. You know, we, we listen to a lot of uh, empty promises, in my opinion, from our legislators who came up with just about every excuse other than coming up with actual solutions for us. Uh, blaming Republicans, blaming this one, blaming that one. The blame game days are over. Now is the time to come together, find solutions, and represent our constituents. 
you know, we, we heard about how, you know, we're, we're talking about what's going on in Harrisburg and Reading and, and other municipalities in the Commonwealth. You know, nothing personal or nothing against them. We're not concerned about that. We're concerned about our city right now. And these officials have an obligation to represent the constituents that elected them. Um, we're not concerned about their, their opinions on what's going on in Harrisburg. That's not what the discussion's about. The discussion is how do we save Scranton? And they have an obligation to help do that. As I said last week, we understand that the legislators didn't cause the problem or that Harrisburg itself didn't cause the problem. Um, we, we caused the problem ourselves by electing the wrong people, obviously. At the end of the day, we only have ourselves to blame. But at the same time, these legislators do have an obligation to help us. Um, I think it was put very well last week that we are the dying child and we need the parent who is our legislators to come in and save us. And if we can't have any commitment from them, um, I just don't see at this point in time where the help's going to come from because it's not coming from Pell and it's not coming from DCED because they've been here for nearly 22 years and they've done nothing to help us then. And I don't plan on seeing any help from them uh, at this point in time. Uh, it's, it's also my opinion that we should try to separate ourselves from them because they've done nothing but cause harm. Um, in regards to uh, the $17 million that was brought up tonight uh, with the Supreme Court ruling, uh, we understand that it's June 30th that we have an obligation to come up with that money. I understand the frustration. I'm just as frustrated as any other resident, but I think that speakers and those at home need to realize that I think council understands the, uh, the seriousness of the situation. I think we, we sometimes come up here and and speak as if, you know, council doesn't understand that it's a serious situation. I, I think, you know, maybe we need to, you know, dust our glasses off and, and, and kind of, you know, come out of the fog a little bit here and, and understand that council does understand it's a serious situation. Uh, you know, go back to August uh, if you don't think it's serious. Uh, you know, council and the administration came together. So when we come up here, um, you know, we need to re understand that these things take time. And if the council and the administration need to work together to, to obtain a loan, uh, those things don't happen overnight. But just because we each week don't hear an update doesn't mean that the council and the administration isn't working on it. Uh, you know, these things go on behind the scenes and, and, and things, you know, discussions take place. And when we ask questions um, of our elected officials, particularly council, um, then we should expect answers in return. Um, you know, you ask a question, you, you know, you're going to get an answer. Um, there's no holding, you know, your time. That's, that's the part of, uh, you know, the, the dialogue we have here. And with that said, uh, that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Chrissy. Hi, Chris. Yes. Hi, How Chris. are you? Great. Well, last night, that first was a miserable fire last night. These, these guys downstairs, good job, boys. Keep it up, Donner. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Sal Zumo. Good evening. I'm from uh, Greenridge, and I'm uh, appearing here tonight because I have a problem at my property, and I'd like to get some help from somebody. I've seen the mayor on a number of occasions. We uh, in my yard. I had a creek that goes through my yard for years, and we've had a cinder block wall put up there, and it's been up over. Uh, maybe 70 years it was taken down when they moved the pipe in the uh, yard and when after they moved the, the uh, pipe in the yard and the wall was down I find out that all this flooding that I've been getting in my house I've had my cellar taken out I've had three furnaces put in plus all the stuff I've lost and had to have my house re uh, jacked up and fixed up over the years and I find out that the creek that was coming down from Dunmore with all this water going over my pool, it took my pool out, it was, it was up to $30,000. And uh, the uh, fact that when the, uh, they have taken this down and opened up, to find out that the water that was coming down in my yard was going into a two-foot pipe at the other side <coughs> of the wall. Now, there was no way a two-foot pipe could ever take the water that was coming down because that would go over my, out my yard, over my driveway, at least 10 to 12, 15 inches at times. And I'm just wondering, I've asked the mayor to come up, and I, my neighbor has now taken the, uh, where the wall has been taken down, my neighbor has put his stuff back in there and has it in my driveway, and I can't get, can't get any help from anybody. 
and I'm just wondering who can help me and get the uh, my yard straightened out and get that wall put back up that's been up there for 70 years, the cinder block wall. And I'd like to see it put back up because I don't want my neighbor over in my yard which is putting, taking fence off of me. Now, who do I go to and what kind of help can I get and where do I start? Uh, Mr. Zumo? Yes. You said you went to see the mayor? I beg your pardon? You went to see the mayor about this situation? I can't quite hear her. Uh, did you go to see Mayor Doherty oh, about yes. this? When did you go? About four times in the last four or five months. And uh, he was going to do something. Nothing's ever happened. He, he's going to send Mr. Campbell. And Mr. Campbell had been down there and saw it. I said, he can't do anything. The man has taken where the, uh, where the uh, line is now. He's over in my yard, and he's not going to move it. I, that's exactly it, and they're not telling him to move it. Well, I can talk to the mayor about your situation and remind him of your visits and that he had promised to help you. They all promised that nobody's been out there yet. <laughs> and not only that, now I have the man up in Kapaus Avenue. I asked him when I moved my garage, I, had, I moved the garage off that I had in the back of my yard. I moved that, I had three or four foot and uh, put a brick under the back of my roof to carry the water out, all brick uh, gutter, to carry the water out to the creek. And my neighbor in the back decided he would take over. He filled in the garage to uh, put the dirt right up to my garage, let the water come down, and it couldn't go through only through the bottom of my basement and took out my, hot, uh, my uh, furnace and, uh, and my heating system. That's going inside. And he laughs at me, he's, he's not doing a thing. He won't, he won't do a thing to take his dirt away from my garage. He's filled it in. So I have neighbors taking my ground. The lady up the street has now decided. My neighbor next door asked me if he could take the hedges out. I said yes. He took two foot, three foot of my ground. The, guy, the lady up the street, she's got a fence over in my yard. She thinks that belongs to her because his fence is over there. So I'm having it be, it, between all of the neighbors and uh, the, that I, I have going on there, I can't get a piece of property to myself. On top of that, Mr. Meehan from O'Hara's, that was the other contractor, come down and uh, pitched my sidewalk has a 45 degree angle in it. And he said they were gonna put new sidewalks in for me and put fix on the uh, garage out to the uh, street. That thing, some, it's got a 45 degree angle in the sidewalk on my property. And if somebody slips, I'm sure I'm, not, I'm, I'm telling them night right now, I'm not gonna be responsible for it. And I can't get them to come down and do a thing about it. So. Is, now this is a, a company that you hired? Not that I hired, the state hired. Mr. Meehan is, uh, Mr. Meehan is the O'Hara, uh, company up in Dunmore that had the contract with the state in rerouting the creek. Mm -hmm. And he's the one that put the 45 degree angle in there. I said, somebody's going to get hurt. Well, we'll be back. We'll put all new sidewalks in for you. We'll fix your driveway. We'll do this. We'll do that. All I have is more problems. I have four or five people all grabbing my property. Well, I think we can... Um and Mr. Doherty didn't show up once. He sent Mr. Campbell out, and he said, I'll send him out again. I said, what good is he going to do? He's not going to move anything. Yes. Mrs. Evans, if I could. Sure. Sal, I, I think there's two issues here. Is just from hearing you state it. Uh, the first is is that I think that St. John's yeah. Creek, uh, what's, the, what's the name of that creek? The, the uh, that was a Meadow Creek. I, I'm sorry, yeah, Meadow Creek. Mr. Me and his company is Fabcor, although he is part of you know the old you know um, O'Hara uh, you know mechanical contractors. Yes. But right. I think the company that had the contract there is Fabcor. Well, Anything was, that was, was 
to any damage that was done to your property, including the sidewalks, not putting them in properly, the city should go after FabCore to have them correct those problems. If that meant taking the wall down or whatever was done in the construction, FabCore would be responsible for. I think some of the other issues is a lady coming over three feet on your land and putting up a fence. You know, the city has no control over that. That, you know, that would be up to you to have a survey and then, you know, the other people, whatever they're doing there, um, if they're interfering with your property, that would be a private dispute, you know, based on a survey as to what your property line is, that they are now encroaching on your property. But the issue as to, as to Meadow Creek, I think it's Meadow Brook Creek, I, for it's been years since I've, you know, looked at, looked at that, but anything that was done by the contractor to your property that has caused damage to your property, that contractor would be responsible for. And I think, I think this was the flood control project. When they put the, they, some of that was open, they replaced the pipe, there was a big pipe in there. Um, I think the city ended up getting grants on this, and I think it was a U.S. Army, I think the U.S. Army designed it. Army Corps of Engineers designed it. So, <clears throat> I think that the proper, the, the thing there would be that, that anything that was done by the contractor, claims should be made in, in writing, I, uh, who's the flood, I don't even know who the flood control officer is, but I know there's somebody here that was in charge of that project. Maybe that would be the thing to find out who was in charge of the project and who was, who was responsible for that Meadow Creek mm -hmm. um, uh, flood control project and then once that's in and you have a claim on that once we find out who it is then the city could at least take up that portion of it how could they take when they put the, the uh, center block wall up I would have no way of knowing who was on the other side of the thing but when they took those center wall down and when they just now rerouted this pipe is when it comes to light that my flood, my flooding for the last 10, 15 years has been the fact that they put put the pipe from it, which Who was took I the wall to, down. Was it was it Fabcor, me and the contractor? Did they take the wall down? Yes, the city took it down. It's well, been that, up there no, for it's been up there for 70 years. No, it, it's not the it was a city project was designed by the Army Corps of Engineers. It was bid, and Meehan was the contractor. Yes. So I think this is a flood control project. I don't know who the flood control officer is, but that contractor would be responsible. I mean, you could probably end up suing the city, and the city would have to bring the contractor into it, as to the damage that the contractor did to your property, but this, the contractor would be responsible for removing the wall and the way that they reinstalled the sidewalks. That's the, con the contractor, that's their responsibility. How, whose responsibility was it to take it from a 10-foot pipe, a 10-foot pipe taking water at the other side of the wall and reducing it to a 2-foot pipe? I, I, have, I have no idea. All I know is that the Army Corps of Engineers was the one, I think it was an Army Corps of Engineers project. There was federal monies involved that the city received, and probably state monies, in order to implement that project. The design, I don't know anything about. I don't know if it was a 10, I can't see how they went from a 10-foot pipe to a 2-foot pipe. It, I, I have no idea. No, and I didn't either. I never knew that because my, I've been getting these floods. I've had my cellar. I had to have my house re uh, uh, propped up again. I spent an awful lot of money in my, in my basement. And I, I never understand, knew but it. I think what we have to find out is that, that there's a... There's a flood control officer that was in charge of the project. And I think they should probably contact Mr. Zumo. I don't know who the flood control officer is. But as I remember it, this, this project was designed by the Army Corps. There was federal funds involved, state funds. 
that came into the city as grants and the city ended up bidding the project and FabCor was the one that, that built the project. So I think that we should find out, have that flood control officer write a letter or call Mr. Zumo and we could at least start there. Yes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the man at the Pass Avenue has now put a fence up against my garage so I can't walk on my own property. He's, he's claiming that now. I'm getting all kinds of problems with the neighbors. Sal, I, I understand, I, but I think that the thing is there's things that the city could help you with, yes. such as with the construction Very and good. damage that was caused by the construction. There's other things that are matters if, if a neighbor is doing something and encroaching on your property and taking over part of your property, that, you know, the city can't do anything with that. That's a private problem. That's, I understand that and I appreciate that. But I, get, I just wish that whatever you can do to get me straightened out from the city and the air uh, and uh, whatever Meehan's problem was, O'Hara's work, what their contract was, but I can't get them to put the wall back up and I'm getting, and the guy, my neighbor has now moved into my driveway and they won't even tell him to get his stuff out of there. Well, if they took the wall down, they have to replace the wall. You know? I mean, if, if the contractor comes in as part of the construction process, takes down your wall, they've damaged your wall, they have to put it back up. Thank you. That's what I need. And I thank need. you. Is there any other questions you have for me to come up and right? answer? I've just got all, all my people. And my neighbor asked me, could I take uh, he, the hedges out? I said, yes. The next thing I know, they come, they told me he has three foot of your ground. He has a fence on my ground. So that's what I'm going through. Each side of me, all around me, is grabbing my ground. Well, thank you, Mr. Zuma. I think, well, if there's nothing else, I have anything you want me to answer, I'll answer it now for you, I hope. And I'll appreciate any, I appreciate any help you can get me and take care of the situation for me. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Fifth order, 5A motions. Uh, Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Uh, briefly, um, first, if, if I do leave before the meeting is all right, I would like to um, leave to try and get to the viewing of Cody Barres. Uh, I was unable to get there this afternoon. Uh, I would not have gotten into the church uh, where the viewing is uh, before the meeting. A um, couple of very quick things. First, I too would like to uh, commend the Scranton Fire Department for the, the great work that they did last evening. Um, and the 500 block of Lackawanna. Um, they, they saved two adjoining bi businesses and um, it, I, I think they, they do a great job and they did a great job last night and uh, I, I think it's, it's important that uh, we commend them when, when these things do take place. Um, as far as the food trucks and I, I know I, I had some questions about the operation of food trucks in the downtown. My questions, it, it was not in opposition to those trucks being there. My, my only questions had to do with, as uh, Councilman Rogan said before, it is, are, are the food trucks operating on a level playing field with the existing businesses. And, and that was my question. If, if they are, then the speakers were right. Competition's a great thing, and there should be competition. Um, as long as it is fair competition. And, and that was all I was looking to accomplish. As far as the, the talk about distances and all, there, there's at this point in time, there's no legislation before us uh, dealing with that. And um, I don't know that, you know, what will happen if, in fact, there is, you know, we, we will discuss it at that time and, and you know, deal with it. But, um, again, um, I have no opposition. And, again, from what I've heard, 
uh, the food that is obtainable that can be purchased in these food trucks is excellent uh, and um, well worth the you know, the effort to to get to them uh, and you know, Maybe they do, you know, they do offer great competition. Maybe it helps improve other restaurants in the downtown by the fact that they're there. Um, so um, if further things come along, we deal with them at that time. Uh, as far as the parking lot ingress and egress, if I have to leave before the, the actual vote on it, um, I'm in favor of the legislation that is before us. Um, I, I think that in, in many cases we sometimes put too much emphasis on the dollars and cents of what's taking place. Um, I, I think what we need to do in, in this case, at least my perspective, is that there needs to be a balance um, between the loss of that, you know, meter revenue and the investment that this these people have made in the neighborhood uh, that area is better for what they have done and um, because the state's requiring them to remove these meters I don't think that we should um, hinder what they've done in that part of the city uh, as mr. as attorney Pascal um, said they've made a great investment over the years in the downtown and in the city of Scranton and that is the balance I think for the loss of the the meter revenue they are doing something they're making an investment in the city of Scranton and I think that's what we should encourage other businesses to do and last day at very last I was not here last week for the caucus and I apologize uh, just uh, was unable to attend um, but uh, and I don't mean to def I don't want to defend all of the state legislators or I don't know what was said but I do know the situation that they are placed in um, in speaking with them individually I know that many of them want to help the city of Scranton the problem is that they can't do it alone they can't go to the state legislature and say do this they must concern themselves with what's going on in other communities whether it's Reading, Harrisburg, Erie those are the votes that they need in order to get legislation passed that would be a benefit to the city of Scranton and um, I, I, I'm sure that they are working on our behalf because I've spoken to most of the people that were here last week about the situations and um, I think it's going to be a long process um, to get anything done at the state level um, many of the things that have been suggested have been tried before um, and hopefully that with with some pressure or lobbying on our behalf and and from other communities that perhaps the the state will see fit to do something to benefit the the cities of this municipal of this commonwealth that are in difficult situations um, hopefully that will take place over the course of the next year two years whatever but we do need their help and I think that they are working on our behalf and that's all i have thank you thank you and councilman Rogan. yes thank you i would also like <clears throat> excuse me to thank our fire department for the great job they did last night with uh, the fire on the 500 block of lackawanna avenue and um, i live in west granton and from my house i could see the smoke um billowing from the downtown and boy i'll tell you when when i first heard about it and saw pictures on facebook and you know and, and heard from friends that were down there I, I thought we were gonna lose two um, two great businesses in the downtown of Buona Pizza and on the other side of the Scranton Liederkranz and I spoke to Giovanni Piccolino last night from Buona Pizza and he wanted to express his thanks as well to the fire department for the great job they did and um, you know there's nothing nothing against volunteer firefighters but this just shows why we need a professional fire department in the city of Scranton 
um, that 500 block could have could have all went up and um, thankfully because of their hard work was just contained to that one vacant building so that's very very good job by the fire department and they deserve uh, kudos for a job well done um, on 7a item 7a and 7b um, I will also be voting yes um, on this legislation and I, I agree with other comments that were made um, both at the podium and by council members that I think one of the big problems the city has had is that people don't want to come here and invest here because they say the city won't work with them they say that you know they'll try to stonewall us every time um, you know we try to do something and and I walked in here tonight and I honestly didn't know how I was going to vote on this issue um, it is the state that wants the meters removed it wasn't you know the business owner and I think we need to encourage business in the downtown so um, I will be voting yes on that and also when it comes to encouraging business on the issue of the food trucks um, I agree with with some some of my colleagues um, and some speakers as well on that issue um, if there was a proposal to make a 500 foot law of the downtown I would oppose that um, I don't think that we could ban and that's essentially what it would do it would ban food trucks from the downtown um, and I, I agree I, I don't think a food truck is a direct competitor with the sit-down restaurant it's a, it's a completely different venue you know it's like comparing I don't know, a takeout pizza to a sit-down meal you know it's kind of in that in that realm where you know if you could go to a food truck if you only have a little bit of time but you want to get some good food you could go there and get something if you have you know an hour to spare you're, you're more likely to go to the restaurant um, that being said I do think what needs to happen is there needs to be a sit-down meeting between owners of food trucks the owners of the um, brick-and-mortar restaurants downtown the mayor a couple members of City Council to make an agreement something could absolutely be worked out where everyone is happy and again this is just like I said before the lack of cooperation that we've seen between government and private business in the city where it, it doesn't make sense if, if the administration were just to send out an ordinance and say here either pass it either yes or no you know we need to negotiate it out before it gets to that point where it could work for everyone involved and um, but like I said if, if if there was something to come down that would completely you know take the food trucks out of the downtown I would vote no I know in big cities Philadelphia New York they're they're becoming a, a new craze you know where there's there's competitions and you know they're, they're very popular and uh, we, it's granted we need to encourage all business in the city um, not just we can't pick one over another so hopefully that's something that the mayor will be interested in working out and as well as the food truck vendors and the brick-and-mortar business owners so hopefully that will that will all come together and we could have an agreement that works for everyone um, two other issues we did receive a response from my question um, to Berkheimer regarding Carl Greco paying city taxes um, and I'll read that off it says Nancy this is, was addressed to our city clerk Nancy Craig in response to council's inquiry we do not have a taxpayer on file by the name of Carl Greco paying EIT in the area near the city if you have an address for the taxpayer please provide it so I will be providing you with that address if, if you don't have it already and we could send a follow-up to see if um, if in fact Mr. Greco does owe taxes to the city as well as the federal government um, Mr. Rogan where our office is already um, moving this along because Great. we got that response previously and um, I believe Mrs. Craig has been in touch with the single tax office and so we're we're taking an alternate route in order to uh, double check and cover all the bases yeah. so I, I know a lot of taxpayers but when that article went in the paper I know my email box and the phone was blowing up with people very upset um, about somebody who made over a million dollars from the taxpayers owing a million dollars to the federal government and uh, I think everyone deserves to know if he in fact owes money to the city as well and that is all I have for tonight thank you thank you and councilman Joyce do you have any comments or motions I do first I want to commend the Scranton Fire Department for the work that they did in taking care of last night's fire on the 500 block of Lackawanna Avenue I echo the comments of my colleagues they did a great job in containing the fire and they deserve to be commended for doing so uh, secondly tonight 
Um, we received some information from Mr. McGowan. Our current cash balance is at $11.3 million, and we have $200,000 in accounts payable. Third, over the past week, I attended a meeting with Business Administrator Ryan McGowan, as well as Mayor Doherty, and other members of the banking community to address uh, funding for the Supreme Court Award. Also present at this meeting was Council President Janet Evans. At the meeting, various revenue categories were discussed. For instance, real estate taxes, refuse revenues, the parking tax, the amusement tax, rental registration, as well as license and permit fees, among others. To elaborate further, in regard to real estate taxes, so far the city has seen a 22.7% increase in real estate tax revenue in comparison to last year. This amount is consistent with the amount of, ta the, amount of the tax increase that occurred late last year. Secondly, in regard to refuse revenue, Overall, refuse revenue was budgeted at a lower amount than previous years due to the fact that refuse revenue was underperforming in previous years. So far, Ryan McGowan, our BA, projected that we're on target to hit refuse revenue in the amount of $3.95 million. Refuse bills are being sent out, and it's expected that we'll receive the greatest influx of refuse revenue in late April later this month and in May. Third, concerning the parking tax, the amount that was budgeted this year was $225,000. This amount was budgeted at a lower amount than Pell's original projection last year. This was done due to some non-payers. For instance, the University of Scranton did not pay the parking tax and is currently suing the city for the exemption to the tax. The University of Scranton does not believe that they are subject to paying the tax on their parking lots and garages that they collect revenue from. Since the University of Scranton is taking an issue with the parking tax, other nonprofits are taking issue with it as well. At the present time, Lackawanna College and Marywood have not paid the tax either. Lackawanna College, Marywood, as well as a few other private parking lots that have not paid the tax will all be billed as delinquent in the future. Fourth, in regard to the amusement tax, bills are in the process of being sent out and will be sent out on a quarterly basis. The majority of revenue from the amusement tax is expected to be made during the concert season at the Toyota Pavilion, which is located in Scranton. As far as the tax itself is concerned, it was also discussed to amend the tax to charge a $1 surcharge on concert tickets rather than a certain percentage. This is analogous to what's currently being done in Wilkes-Barre Township. Fifth, concerning rental registration, we're finally seeing revenue this year from the registration of rental units. In fact, so far the city has realized over $80,000 in rental registration revenue. With this in mind, it's projected that the city will hit the $100,000 target that was uh, budgeted for this year. Sixth, as far as license and permit revenue is concerned, Ryan McGowan, our BA, projects that we'll be on target to realize budgeted revenue amounts. The Guy Singer expansion, which is a large contributing factor to the license and permit revenue that is expected for this year, is still scheduled to happen. Uh, through the first two months of the year, the city has received $339,101, just to give you an update of where we are. In communication with the business administrator's office, I had requested the cash flow reports for the first three months of the year. So far, the cash flow report uh, for the first two months of the year was the only document that was prepared. Once I receive the cash flow report for the first three months of the year, I'll further elaborate on where we are as far as revenue and expenditures are concerned. And I do have some citizens' requests tonight. Um, first, uh, West Granton residents have informed me that the lot located at 1130 Rock Street is in deplorable condition. The vacant lot contains beer cans, bottles, and other debris. Residents would like to see this lot cleaned up as they fear it's a home for rats, which have been a problem in the area. Uh, Mrs. Craig, 
please notify Director Seitzinger of this situation and ask him to rectify the scenario in, in the best way that he sees fit. West Granton residents have informed me that the lot located at 529 Hampton Street and at the corner of Hampton Street and 6th Avenue are in poor condition. Both lots contain trash buildup and fallen down trees. Residents in nearby homes have informed me that these lots are the cause of rodent infestation and would like to see something done. Uh, Mrs. Craig, uh, please add this to the list or add these locations on Hampton Street to the list of issues to address with Director Seitzinger. Um, a West Granton resident residing at 712 Island Street has informed me that a hole has opened up in her driveway and fears that it could be due to a mine subsidence. This is becoming problematic as she does not want to see her home eventually sink in years to come. Mrs. Craig, please notify Director Dewar of this situation and ask him to visit the site to see if there's any way that the DPW could fill the hole. Residents living in the 1100 block of Einan Street have informed me that Reagan Place, which is located directly behind Einan Street, has been paved. However, since it has been paved, there has been a great deal of water runoff due to the manner in which the paving was done. Mrs. Craig, please add this to the list of issues to address with Director Dewar. Residents living in the Clover Field area of West Granton have informed me that there are many speeding motorists in the five to 700 blocks of West Elm Street and fear that the situation will eventually lead to an accident given that there are many children in the neighborhood. Mrs. Craig, please forward this to Chief Graziano and ask him to send an officer to the site to monitor the situation. Residents living in the 500 block of West Elm Street have also informed me that there are trailers being parked at the end of the block, which is considered an R1 zone. The parking of the, tra of the tractor trailers is causing a great amount of dust in the area, and residents would like to see something done. Mrs. Craig, please add this to the list of issues to address with Director Seitzinger. And finally, a resident of West Granton living at 615 Bromley Avenue has informed me that there was recent work done on the road by TSE, which has led to a great deal of water runoff on the resident's property during rainy days. The resident would like to see something done about the situation as it's damaging the resident's property. Mrs. Craig, please add this to the list of issues to address with Director Dewar, and that's all. Thank you. Good evening. Undoubtedly, we're all aware of the epidemic of gun violence in our country and the proposed ways in which to reduce it. Although a, ma a majority of Americans have made it clear that they support increased gun control and demand action now, some of our elected officials in the U.S. Congress and Senate choose to ignore the voices of the majority. Some in Congress have even threatened to filibuster critical votes pertaining to increased gun control. At the same time, efforts sprouted in several Republican-led states, such as South Dakota, Kansas, and Missouri, to allow trained teachers to carry guns into the classroom, while the NRA called for armed officers in every American school both of which were ill-conceived and ill-fated responses to the epidemic of, of gun violence. Rather than decreasing gun violence against our children and school personnel, such measures would create the very real possibility of increasing violence from within schools. On the other hand, the states of Connecticut, New York, Maryland, and Colorado have passed significant gun control measures to better protect their children and youth and have listened to the voices of their citizens. The state of Pennsylvania can ill afford to ignore stricter gun control measures and stand on the sidelines. Equally troubling, many of our federal legislators seem to lack the courage and resolve to take significant steps to provide stricter gun control laws of late and thereby reduce gun violence in our nation. Therefore, with my colleagues' agreement, I ask Mrs. Craig to forward letters to Congressman Matt Cartwright and Lou Barletta 
and Senators Bob Casey and Pat Toomey, asking them to vote to ban military-style assault weapons, set a 10-round limit for magazines, approve universal background checks to include gun shows and online transactions, require reporting of lost or stolen firearms, and approve the current Senate bill that would increase the difficulty for criminals and individuals suffering with mental illnesses who could pose a threat to themselves or others to obtain firearms a measure that is supported by nine out of 10 Americans, including a majority of gun owners. All of the aforementioned measures deserve a vote in both the Senate and Congress. The Council of the City of Scranton urges our elected leaders to protect our children and youth, make our schools safer, and represent the will of the majority of your constituents by voting to approve stronger and stricter gun laws. Our elected leaders have the opportunity to reduce gun violence in our country. They must reaffirm the American tradition of responsible gun ownership and act now to stop guns from reaching the hands of dangerous individuals who would use them to commit acts of violence. Also, Mrs. Craig, please forward similar letters to State Senator John Blake and Representatives Martin Flynn and Kevin Haggerty, requesting their aggressive pursuit and support of the enactment of the aforementioned measures in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, do I have the agreement of my colleagues to send these letters? I would abstain if it were a vote just because of my position. No, it's but, not a vote. Oh, okay. It's just a letter. We're not sure. passing a, a resolution. <laughs> That's fine. It's fine with me. Well, thank you all. And Mrs. Craig, if you could please send those letters as soon as possible. Next, in an April 9th, 2013 letter to City Council, Chief Graziano outlines a very sound program for administering handicapped parking signs and requests the drafting of a new city ordinance to implement it. Mrs. Craig, please send a letter to Mayor Doherty and Solicitor Paul Kelly on behalf of City Council requesting such ordinance is drafted and submitted to City Council's office as soon as possible. Immediate action can help to address the needs of handicapped citizens who have remained on the waiting list for far too long. Next, City Council is also in receipt of an April 9, 2013 letter from Attorney Donald Fredrickson, Jr., County Solicitor, regarding our March 22, 2013 request to have the County Tax Assessor's Office review the status of all nonprofits to determine whether each meets the criteria for property tax exemption. Council wished to ensure that all properties off the tax rolls deserve to remain so, similar to the procedure followed in Allegheny County last month where nearly 3,000 letters were mailed by the Office of Property Assessment to nonprofits asking each to complete a three-page application and explain why the property meets a 2012 state Supreme Court decision that qualifies them for tax exemption as a public charity. In his letter, however, Attorney Fredrickson from Lackawanna County states, quote, we have determined that the proper procedure to follow in challenging a nonprofit status is for the, mun the municipality to conduct an investigation into the standing of the various nonprofit organizations located within its jurisdiction. Now, it is evident that the county commissioners have no intention to review the status of any nonprofits either in Scranton or in any portion of Lackawanna County. Rather, they seem to have chosen to guard the status quo 
whereby nonprofits increasingly devour taxable properties for use that will never be reviewed for compliance with the criteria for tax exemption, while city and county taxpayers will continue to pay not only for their taxes, but the taxes of all nonprofits. This decision marks the third time in which the county commissioners have refused the requests of Scranton City Council to help the taxpayers. And finally, I have two citizens' requests. Pay Hollister Avenue. Pave Hollister Avenue in North Scranton, which borders a portion of Weston Park. Now, this same request was made in 2012, and it received no action. North Scranton residents note that the majority of streets included on the 2013 paving list are outside of North Scranton, and so they are asking for a fair share of the paving program. Residents report that Halsey Court, which is littered with huge potholes in which parts of the road are missing, has not been paved in 50 years. Nevertheless, drivers access it as a shortcut onto Landis Street. These residents are upset to learn that surrounding streets and courts, such as Snyder Avenue, Acker Avenue, and Griffiths Court, are being paved. Please send letters to Mayor Doherty and DPW Director Dewar requesting the paving of Hollister Avenue and Halsey Court. And that's it. 5B, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to procure a forbearance on payments to the Keystone Sanitary Landfill in the amount of $1 million for year 2013 and to repay said amount in 36 consecutive monthly payments of $27,777.78 per month beginning January 15, 2014 and ending on December 15, 2016. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6A, reading by title, file of council number 17, 2013, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to disperse $20,000 from the account into which repayment of urban development action grants, UDAG, are deposited, UDAG repayment account for an operating grant to ECTV, the city's PEG channel operator. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it and so moved. 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption, file of council number 15, 2013, authorizing excavations on the 200 block of Penn Avenue and 300 block of Linden Street to permit motor vehicle ingress, egress, and regress into a parking lot at the corner of Penn Avenue and Linden Street for NGP Enterprises, LLC. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Works? As Chair for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Rock? Yes. Mr. Rowling? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. Uh, can we have a motion to appoint a temporary chair to the Public Safety Committee, please? Um, I make a motion to appoint Councilman Joyce temporary chair for public safety. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, file of Council number 16, 2013, authorizing the removal of parking meters on Penn Avenue 200 block and Linden Street 300 block in the City of Scranton to provide an ingress and egress from Penn Avenue and Linden Street to a parking lot for NGP Enterprises, LLC. 
What is the recommendation of the Acting Chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As the Acting Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. Before we uh, adjourn for the night, I'd like to thank Mr. Charlie Newcomb for running tonight's cameras and making this meeting available to all of our viewers at home. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.